not working. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rev the engine and see whether or not it's just not getting enough RPM to excite that alternator. I'm going to check the alternator for a good ground. Basically, what I got to do is I measure from the case of the alternator to the uh, negative terminal on the battery. I should get zero volts. Uh, I measured it to zero volts on the case of the alternator to ground. Then I also check continuity from the uh, case of the alternator to the negative terminal. And uh, so I got a good ground on the alternator. So that ain't it. And I know my alternator is good because it was just tested. So my next uh, question is. Is my idiot light circuit not sufficient enough to excite the alternator? If that's the case, I believe I can verify that by uh, sending that white wire that goes to the idiot light right now directly to 12 volt. Alright, so here's what I did. I disconnected my uh, exciting wire, or the wire that goes to the circuit to excite the alternator, and I momentarily touched it directly to the sensing wire, which is right on a 12 volt source. As soon as I did that, there was a slight load on the engine, you can tell, because it actually started vibrating a little heavier at idle. And immediately, my amp, my amp meter started registering. And as you can see, it's registering, it's charging, and it's charging hard. So. What I can do now is, if I reconnect this wire to my idiot light, I bet you my idiot light will not light. I have now reconnected the idiot light, and it is out. The reason why my idiot light went out is because the alternator is now producing voltage. And charging my battery, my low battery. So now I can uh, take a look at the... Uh, voltage on the battery here. Twelve point nine eight. Little low, but don't forget we're at an idle right now. Boost it up just a little bit. And I'm getting 13.6. And what I want to do is I just want to double check and make sure it's regulating okay. So I'm going to put it up to max idle and make sure the voltage doesn't go above uh, about 13.8 or 14. There you go, 13.8. But that does make my ammeter go way too high. That's just because this battery is really low, so it's really, right now, it's willing to accept any current that's being sent its way. Once the battery is uh, back up to a full charge, it won't be putting such a, uh, a current draw through that ammeter or on the alternator. So the question is, how do I fix this problem? Well, I'll tell you how I fix this problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a resistor in parallel with that light. What's happening is that light is uh, not allowing enough current to flow in that exciter circuit. And it's not uncommon for there to be a resistor in there anyways. And uh, a lot of the old automobile wiring diagrams, you won't see a resistor, but there'll be a wire that will be marked as resistor wire. And in the old days, they used nichrome wire uh, with insulation on it. And nichrome wire is a type of wire that has a built-in resistance to it. They still use nichrome wire in its bare form, and they wind it into coils, and that's how they make uh, heating elements of different types. But that's really the only practical use for it these days, and it's getting harder and harder to find nichrome wire. So a lot of guys have found out that you can eliminate that wire as long as you put regular wire in in series with a power resistor. And the power resistor typically is around 30 ohms. And I even found a website that had a part number for one that you could order. And it's got a high enough wattage so it can take the current flow. Uh, and it goes in parallel with the uh, light. It serves two purposes. Even if this was exciting and working properly with just the light in there, you run the risk of your charge circuit going dead if the bulb burns open. And the problem is, of course, the bulb burns open. And if you don't have an ammeter, you don't even know that it's not charging until 
all of a sudden, you know, the vehicle dies because it's a gasoline engine working on ignition. In this case, the diesel would just keep running, but the lights and stuff would just get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, and then you go to restart it, and you'd have no power left. So uh, the uh, resistor would continue to uh, allow the uh, alternator to be excited and start it up, so the alternator would continue to work even though the bulb would be burnt open. In my situation here, I'm going to need that because my um, particular alternator I've got on here is not going to be excited by just that bulb circuit. Now, there's another fix to that, but we're not going to do it. The regulator IC module that's in back of that alternator that I showed you what it looks like downstairs uh, on the other alternator, that little pack can be changed out to another part number that allows the alternator to be more easily excited at a lower RPM. But we're not going to go through that trouble. We're going to leave that just the way it is. Because the little regulator IC modules, you know, you can get them online pretty cheap, but they vary in price depending on where you get them from. And they're expensive enough. And then, you know, that also involves disassembling the entire alternator when I could just add a resistor underneath my dashboard where I'm already doing all new wiring anyways. So anyways, I'm happy with the results right now. I've been working this thing for about half an hour now. And uh, I was just going to say, it's starting to run really rough, skipping really bad during idle. And uh, it was surging when I was uh, driving along. And lo and behold, it just shut down. So, something's going to foul here. Looks like my injection pump's still leaking like a sieve. I mean, I may have actually run out of fuel. Between not having that much fuel in the tank to begin with, maybe five gallons, and the fact that this thing's leaking fuel so bad over here, uh, it might have been something as simple as that, just running out of fuel. Or, it's exhibiting the problem that uh, the original owner had said he had seen that when it got hot and he was working it, it would die. And then uh, once it cooled off, it would be okay again. Now, I know that uh, those, can be, those can be the classic symptoms of a uh, bad injector pump. But obviously, we're not going to go chasing our tail and just assuming that uh, when it might be something as simple as just being out of fuel.